please give a big, big round of applause to Conrad Morley, everybody. Come on! Thank you so much, beautiful people of Budapest. Are we that beautiful, really? <laughs> of course, it's only March and I already have a sunburn. I can see that. I got a sunburn today. I haven't even been outside. I'm getting a tan off of these lights right now. It's hard being ginger because you have to buy suntan lotion all the time, no matter what time of year it is. And the one that you have to buy is for children. Do you know how humiliating it is to go in and ask for the one for the kids? Yes, can I get SPF 100, please? Yes, the one with the picture of a white baby on the bottle. Yes, yeah. the one for ginger ghosts. Yes, please, I will have that. But uh, I, like I said, uh, from the UK, but I actually live over in uh, Denmark. Everything is very equal and organized and neat and safe. And when I bring my Hungarian friends over, they're very surprised. I told a friend of mine that we were gonna go and visit a Danish village. And we arrived and we're walking around. He's like, Conrad, this isn't a village. There's no garbage on the ground. There's a working sewage system. Where are the gypsies? Like, these are the questions, for real. This is what you were saying to me. I think the weather right now is really, really nice here in Hungary. And Hungarians don't think that at all. It could be 22 degrees and you will see a Hungarian in a body warmer walking around. Go to Scandinavia, 17 degrees. People are running to the fucking beach. It's true. I don't trust my Hungarian in-laws when we come to visit because when they give me advice, they're like, oh, it's very cold, you'll need a winter jacket. I'm like, if it's 15, I'm wearing flip-flops and shorts, okay? <laughs> very different over in Scandinavia. Do you see the differences in the way that uh, people, the jobs that people have, the way they behave? Even people who collect the rubbish in the big rubbish trucks in Scandinavia, they look amazing. <laughs> like the guy that turns up, his name is Tor, you know? And he drives a Tesla. <laughs> and he has a pension and he has a better income than you. Have you seen the people driving the trash trucks in Hungary? The guy hanging off the back, it looks like he just got out of prison. He looks like he will cut off your head if you mix the plastics with the paper. It's nice to be in uh, Hungary, see the Hungarian language everywhere. It's totally crazy, uh, crazy and beautiful and very strange language. I think that it's really cool that it is everywhere except in Rossmann. I really like that because if you need to buy baby food or shampoo, then apparently you have to speak German. That's good. That's nice. Brilliant. Trying to understand uh, the Hungarian language a little bit better. Sometimes I start learning things about it and then uh, I can't take it seriously anymore. Like I recently learned the days of the week and to me they all sound like fucking Pokemon. <laughs> because you know it from your own languages, right? It will be something, and if you think about German, for example, you know, Montag, Dienstag, there's always a similar, and it's not in Hungarian. It's not the same. It's Hetfu, Ked, Sesdra, Chuka, 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 Chuka. <laughs> Isn't that the one that comes out of Charmander? I don't know. Um, <laughs> Pentec, and my absolute favorite, has to be Zombat. Yeah. <laughs> Zombat, you slice attack. <laughs> the language is crazy overall. I try, I will learn one or two words of Hungarian and then I will use them all the time to try and impress people as I'm walking around. Like the other day it was kind of warm in the city so I was walking around and I was going Malag Vajok. <laughs> And my wife's mother's like, shut up, shut up, you have to stop saying that. I think Hungarians are very sweet people, but you guys can be unbelievably pessimistic. I was on a bus the other day and my wife had to translate the conversation between two old ladies who were sitting in front of us. You, got, you guys call them Oreg Nemi, is that right? It's like these old babushka type ladies that are just everywhere. They live on the bus, they actually never, they never, they're just always there, just always forever. But there's these two Oreg Nani ladies sitting there, and of course it's uh, hot on the bus, everybody's wearing a body warmer because they think that it's, it's cold. And uh, they, the lady cracked open the window and some fresh air came in and she said, oh, that's good. And the woman next to her turned to her and said, at least something is good. <laughs> 
Wonderful. I really love uh, uh, Hungarian attitudes to things. I have a, my, uh, we have a, me and my wife, we have a friend and they were dating a Hungarian and they wanted to uh, cheer this person up because things were going wrong. So she gave them three pieces of advice and I need a Hungarian person in the front row. No. No? Okay. I, <laughs> I feel like I've outed him. He's like, no, 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 no. <laughs> But your name is Laszlo, right? Yes. Yeah, so you're definitely Hungarian. There we go. Um, would you say into the microphone uh, the, the, the one that is number one? It means pleasantly disappointed. <laughs> and Hungarians are using this all the time. I love it so much. What a way to think about things. I thought the comedy show was going to be absolute shit, but I was pleasantly disappointed. <laughs> After 10 minutes, the ginger guy was actually funny, so that was good. Uh, so this, this Hungarian uh, guy that she's dating is feeling really sad, so then she gives her the second piece of, uh, a second idea, which is number two. <laughs> Hungarians are saying this to each other all the time, and it literally means, don't get fucked with sorrow. <laughs> and then would you mind reading the last one for us? Yes. <laughs> it means uh, don't let your nose hang, right? Just chin up, get on the bus, you know, have a good time. Um, but I love, the, I, I, I love the pessimism that's hidden inside uh, the Hungarian language. I was walking down the street and I realised that the Hungarian version of Burger King, it sounds like a monarch who has lost their kingdom, right? Burger King. <laughs> It sounds like he put too much salt in the servant's food or something and then he was cursed in like a village fairy tale. And I'm trying to understand the language. My, my wife is speaking uh, Hungarian to our children all the time and uh, I just pick up like little random words that pop out and uh, it confuses me. Like she's asking them to eat their food but she keeps saying fox any. Is that right? <laughs> this show is just for Laszlo and his friend by the way. There's about 80% international, like, what the fuck is this on about? <laughs> I'm probably totally saying it, is it Fox Any? Fox Any. Fox Any. He's very good at Hungarian, did you hear that? <laughs> he even went like, <clears throat> Fox Any. <laughs> it's asking you if you would like to eat something, right? But it sounds like a little fox, you know? Imagine if you say <laughs> Again, that joke is for Laszlo. Um, one of my favorites is that if you want to kiss somebody on the face, you, ask, you say to them, shock pussy. Which to me sounds like an electric vagina. That's good. <laughs> I would need your help again in a second. I've... My children, of course, speaking the, the three languages, they're very sweet. They get very confused sometimes. It's very confusing for me. My son, who is five, he runs out of the bedroom and he, said, he says to me, help, help, my sister is trying to kill me. Right? She's two years old. So... <laughs> She can't, kill, she can't even kill a butterfly if she was trying. But the reason is that because I will kill you and I will hug you is the same thing in Hungarian. If you wouldn't mind reading number four for everybody. <laughs> I love the amount of murders that must happen in this country. I wanted to hug him. I accidentally said I'd kill him and I followed through. So... There's a lot of pessimism in the Hungarian language and I think it doesn't come any better than the Hungarian national anthem. This is my absolute favourite. My wife said to me, you should learn it and sing it for them in Hungarian. I can't do that, I can't do it. But I will give you the English translated version and the, the national anthem is so fantastic. Really think about what they're trying to evoke in this, right? It says, oh God bless the nation of Hungary, fair enough. Extend over it your guiding arm during strife with its enemies, long torn by ill fate. Bring upon it a time of relief. This nation has suffered for all sins of past and future. <laughs> Remember, this was written before Catalin Novak, okay? <laughs> Pity, O oh Lord, of the Hungarians. Pity, pity them, who are tossed by waves of danger. Extend over it your guiding arm on the sea of its misery. Long torn by ill fate, bring upon it a time of relief. They who have suffered for all sins 
of past and the future. Wow. It was shit, it is shit, and it will be shit. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. And I love the fact that this is sung so, so often here in Hungary, right? At times of celebration, right? Like the Olympics, the World Cup, even at school, right? The school season is starting. Please fucking pity us on a sea <laughs> of misery. But Budapest is a, uh, a very different kind of vibe uh, to the rest of Hungary. I've travelled a little bit in the country and it's, uh, it's a wonderful city. It's, it can be a very, very different place. I know you have been to some of the fancy places over in Buda, but fucking hell. It's amazing. It's like, you know, premium Kokos Chigger, you know? <laughs> People are eating at like Derenye Bistro, you know? People are wearing like Coco Chanel <laughs> and Cristobal Balenciaga and... Louis Vuitton and walking around with their little dogs everywhere and looking amazing. And it, doesn't, it makes me think that you really have to have a fantastic name to become a successful luxury brand name, right? Because it's always something really fancy, right? It's always Yves Saint Laurent or something like that. It's never like, hey, what is he wearing? Uh, Steve McGibbons? Yeah. yeah. What's coming down the runway now? Yeah, uh, Dave Shittington, actually, yeah. yeah, yeah. We're staying in a really nice place in Budapest at the moment. Uh, every, like, buildings are so beautiful and wonderful. We're staying with a female friend of ours, and I realised that there is a very big difference between staying with your male friends and your female friends. There really is such a big difference, because when we got to her front door, she put the key in, but before she opened the door, she looked at us, and she said the same thing that a woman will always say before they let you into their home. It's a mess in there. <laughs> it's chaos. It's a disaster. I haven't had a chance to clean opened her front door, it was like walking into a showroom. It was amazing. <laughs> Everything was dusted and neat and organized and lovely. She had made like a platter of, you know, like premium kokos chiggers and coffee <laughs> and all of these little things for us. And we sat down uh, at the table and we'd been there for five minutes. And that's when I really realized there's such a big difference between staying with your male friends and your female friends. After five minutes, she looked at me and my wife and said, while you're staying with me, you will need a towel. What type of towel would you like? <laughs> the fact she realised that I will need a towel is ten levels above a man. <laughs> she went over to a cupboard and opened a drawer full of towels and said, which one would you like? You haven't seen a man open a drawer of towels in your life. <laughs> Unless, of course, he opened the wrong drawer. <laughs> oh, PlayStation's in the other one. Do you know when you realise you need a towel when you stay with your guy friend is when you turn off the water in the, his shower and you think, where the fuck are the towels? <laughs> hey man, where are the towels? <laughs> the towel is on the floor. Ah, <laughs> oh, the towel. Ah, 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 Budapest is a great city. I love the amount of roadworks happening in the city because... <laughs> <laughs> Everything is a hole in the city. Every corner of every road is very important. We must dig this up right now. And what I love is the, is the classic Hungarian setup where there is one guy digging and six guys watching. <laughs> Always. And he's really sweating, like he's working really hard and they're just standing there drinking a borshody. Like, uh. And what I love is that of those six guys, one of them is always wearing his own clothes. Have you noticed that? Like five of them are wearing the uniform and then there's one guy in his own clothes. And Hungarians think this is totally normal. They're like, yeah, that's Laszlo's friend, obviously. He's here, he's welcome as well. People talk about Hungarians can be a little bit aggressive, a little bit pessimistic. It's not always like that. Like, take getting on the bus, for example. I actually think that people are very respectful and can be very kind when the door opens, modelled off, and they can get in and out very politely with each other, unless they're old. Apparently, if you're old in this country, you can just push your way to the fucking front. I love the way you will see an old lady with two walking sticks, right, claiming for her fucking pension, and the moment the bus door's open, she drops that shit, she will push you to the ground, out of the way. My wife is always saying that uh, the public transport here in Hungary uh, it can be really good, especially in Budapest, uh, except that there was a time when she lived through metro fires, Apparently the M3 was so often on fire that they made a website. This is true. 
called Is the Metro on Fire? <laughs> dot HU. That you would just check every morning. Is the Oh, it is on fire. All right, I'll take the bus. <laughs> it's totally normal. Oh, we have to get off. Yeah, because there's a massive fire. Yeah, of course. Of course. Outside of Budapest. That's a different experience. I love that 60 kilometers from here, there is a city called 60. <laughs> it's true. It's called Hudvan, exactly. There is a city called Hudvan because it is 60 kilometers from Budapest. Talk about living in the fucking shadow of someone else. What do they name you after? They name me after the fact that I'm 60 kilometers from something good. That's why I have that name. If you're from outside of uh, Budapest and uh, preferably over in the east, you of course have a different place to ballot on that you go. You go to Tissa Lake. Yeah, it's kind of like the Aldi discount version of Balaton, you know? <laughs> it really is. <laughs> it's like if you were leaving Aldi and there's like a bargain discount bucket and you're like, oh, there's a Tissa Lake in there, look at that. <laughs> Tissa Lake surrounded by Tissa fuck. I, I don't know if you've been to Tissa Lake, but just imagine it's brown water, wasps and pansios. That's it, the whole thing. <laughs> Panzios everywhere, serving everything on the menu uh, with that classic, you know, is this fried enough? That's basically <laughs> the Panzio vibe. Can we fry this for you? You can never find a vegetable in these places. The closest thing you'll get to a vegetable is a decorative paprika at the entrance to the Panzio. <laughs> Main theme inside the Panzio, do you have enough cholesterol in your life? <laughs> There are many places that you do want to be in Hungary. You want to be out, you want to be out in the nature, but there is a place that you absolutely do not want to be on the internet. You do not want to be on the internet. You do not want to be in Facebook groups in this country. Holy shit, it's not even fucking trolls bullying you. It's your grandmother. Oh my God, the Facebook group. I've been one for, the, for Eger, uh, north, northeast of here, and oh my God, it's vicious. It's horrible, the pessimism and anger. There was one very naive person who, was put, who had grown too many tomato plants in their garden. So they said, I'm putting the tomato plants outside my front door for people to collect. The comments, oh my God, who the fuck do you think you are? <laughs> Clogging up the public places with your filthy tomatoes. <laughs> with your filthy imported European Union job stealing tomatoes. <laughs> what a horrible thing to do. Eat local sausage, that's what you should be doing. <laughs> but the last little thing I wanted to leave you with was to give you what Hungarian grandparents do the very best, which is songs. Hungarian grandparents know the very best songs and I'm gonna call upon my friend Laszlo here. There are two songs that I really, really love that I wanted to highlight and one of them has to be, uh, it's uh, number six down here and if you know it, please sing along with uh, Laszlo. <laughs> <laughs> I am going to sing. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I like his face. I'm going to sing. <laughs> Just read uh, it. Uh, number six, please. You know the song. I, I do not want to sing. Okay, well, all right. <laughs> Just read Okay, it. let's sing together. Mokushka, Mokushka. Mokushka. <laughs> Very nice, that was very beautiful. Please give Lazarus a round of applause. That was beautiful. I love this so much. It's basically like, little squirrel, little squirrel. You've fallen out of a tree. Your leg is broken, but I'm not going to fucking help you. <laughs> it's so good. And uh, the very last song that I wanted uh, you to sing for us, sir, is... <laughs> He's like, I did not sign up for this. Um, I love this one because to me, it really sounds like the introduction to the Game of Thrones, you know? Like you're watching. <laughs> I know it has nothing to do with that, but it has, it, it's really, really good. I really hope that you know it. It is number seven. Or maybe your friend knows it. Érik a szőlő, hajlik a vesző, bodor a levele, két szegény egény szántani menne, de nincsen kenyere, van verős hagyma, hal a lisznyában, keserű nagyon a szolgálegénynek, te a szegénynek,
<laughs> this is also what I love about Hungary is that everybody will know the song and there'll be like an extra part that only like the super grandmothers know, you know, like the extra after chorus. But I love this song so much because it basically means there was nothing really to eat. Times were really, really hard. The thing that we drove on the farm was really, really bouncy and then everything got worse. Yeah. <laughs> Pure Hungarian optimism. I love that. You guys have been so much fun. Thank you for coming out this evening. Have a wonderful evening, everybody. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Kusunum.